Alright, so there are still a few more things that we want to do in order to complete the texturing process for the character. And the first thing that I want to do is actually bake the texture map or the actual color map of the model. There's still a few more things that you can do with it, like for example, I have not done any texturing for the eyeballs. Which is something that I'm going to do in Photoshop. And there are other things that you can do in Photoshop as well with the texture that you bake from ZBrush. Alright, so it's really simple it's a really simple process to bake the texture map. So what you do is let's scroll down here on the side and let's look at poly paint. Actually no. UV map first. And here basically you decide the size of the map that you're going to bake. In this case I'm going to bake a 2048 map. Which is going to be a square map. It's going to be 2048 by 2048. So let's click where it, click where it says uh, texture map. Basically what we want to click is where it says new from, po from poly paint. That is the process that we did uh, painting on the model here in ZBrush. Uh, you call that poly painting on the model. So let's click on that. It, there are no settings for it, so all you have to do is click on it. And as you can see, we get our texture right here. We can see a thumbnail of it. And that is basically what it looks like. And at the same time, since you have the thumbnail right here, it is already applied to the model so that we can see how it's going to look on it. And we can scan for uh, for any issues that might be on the on the map. For example, on my model, it looks like there's a problem here. And if I look at my texture, it looks like most most likely is a uh, an issue with my UVs, I probably didn't pack my, UV, my UVs very properly just probably that that is what is causing this and of course I can even uh, fix that using Photoshop so it looks overall it looks fine so you, you baked the texture map but you want to make sure you save it to your computer somewhere so in order to do that we're going, to, we're going to click where it says clone texture right here and uh, the moment you click there you're going to see that it's going to appear over here you're going to see the thumbnail here under texture and it's right there all right but now after doing that you have to go over here on the texture menu and the first thing that you have to do is a uh, foot V and this is because uh, all other softwares uh, have it flipped, have the V uh, flipped. So once you flip it, we're going to export. And you're going to select a folder where you want to save uh, the image. So I'm going to give it a name. It's going to be... Uh, Luigi diffuse map. I'm actually not going to save because I already have one there, so I don't even have to. And you can save it as a JPEG. Actually, I wouldn't save it as a JPEG. Make sure at this moment I, the best choice we have here from ZBrush is probably a PSD. But I'll change that to some some other uh, file type once we're in Photoshop. Make sure you save that. So that's basically how you get your texture map and if you click on the thumbnail here you can turn off your texture all right so now the other thing that we want to do is create a normal map because we want a way to transfer all all the detail the sculpt details back to Maya so we need to bake a map that's going to tell Maya all about those details and going to help it show all the details there are two types of maps that we could use for that uh, there's a displacement map and there is a normal map 
for the for this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the normal map instead of uh, a displacement if you're interested in making a displacement map I'm sure there's plenty of videos here on YouTube or in the internet as well so the settings for a normal map I'm gonna make sure you keep it to tangent and uh, the option of uh, enabling attack tip it's a uh, optional but uh, basically if you enable it you're going to get more of the detail the more detailed areas so that's a good one to enable and then everything else should be fine so you're going to click where it says create normal map I'm going to stop the recording here because it might take a few minutes and I'll be back when I have uh, created a normal map so now I created my normal map and I have to apologize first because I forgot to one step to tell you one step and that is that you have to make sure you go to the lowest subdivision level of your model so make sure you go all the way to one under geometry and then create the normal map so once you create it you can see that it's right here in order to save it we have to do the pretty much the same uh, process as we did with the texture map so click where it says uh, normal map but before we go on we want to make sure that our normal map uh, is actually working correctly so I want the, to display the normal map on the surface of my object and the easiest way to do it is if you go back to the texture map here and click on the thumbnail as you can see you have the uh, diffuse map that you created but the normal map is here as well which is the blue one so if you click on that one now we can actually see that it is on the model and as you can see if we disable this it's actually not applied to the model but it's a good way to just see it on it so we want to go in back ahead and see this I'm going to increase my levels my subdivision level to a higher number and basically what we're looking for now is a fixing any type of seam that may be visible in the on the model here and the first thing that I noticed is that there are indeed some seams and again this may be an issue of the from the UVs whether they have distortion or not uh, more often than not I found that it tends to be a problem with ZBrush when creating normal maps uh, yet I have not been able to create perfect normal maps from ZBrush most often than not I get uh, I get those seams here which is why I use a different software which is called XNormal so that is for people who are interested uh, there's probably plenty of videos online but in this case since we have ZBrush we can work with it so we want to make sure we fix the seams here and in order to do that we pretty much have to paint on it so we'll probably have to actually apply the the normal map texture on the model so let's go ahead and disable this so at this moment I recommend that you save a different instance of the ZBrush file just to make sure you don't lose your color map so what we're going to do is enable RGV go to color fill object and make sure that the texture was actually enabled here so now that the model has the texture on it we can sample a color like the blue right here scale that down I'm going to disable my symmetry I'm going to press X for that and if you start painting do that you can start painting on it and start to erase the seam there and this is really difficult to do with ZBrush it's actually really difficult to kind of fix something like this because especially because you don't know uh, what the colors are representing sometimes whether it is a bump or an indentation 
but you can start to erase and make sure that there is no seam there and make sure you sample the colors around uh, the seam So that is the idea, so I would recommend going around the whole model, making sure that there are no seams, for example here, in the area right there, areas that are really noticeable, I would totally fix, I would even fix some areas like this. Right. So once, let's say, you're done uh, fixing all those little issues, and make sure you're really gentle with it. Don't go too overboard. So once you're done fixing that, you're going to go through the same process of creating a texture map. So this time it's going to be a texture map. It's not going to be the the normal map anymore. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go to New from Poly Paint. And you're going to get that texture map, which is going to be blue this time, like this. And you're going to go ahead and save it and export on your texture. And save it as the normal map. Alright. So the last thing that you want to do, since we're in ZBrush, we can go ahead and we can either export the model from here or use the same one we had in Maya. I'll export this one because sometimes there are some changes uh, on the geometry, really slight changes on the shape of the model. So I'm going to export this one. Make sure you go to the lowest subdivision level. I'll go to level 1. So this is where my model is at. And to export the actual mesh, I'm going to where it says export. I'm going to disable where it says group. And I'm going to export the mesh as an OBJ object. Okay. And that is all that we have to do here in ZBrush. And next, we're going to Photoshop, do a few uh, tweaks on the diffuse map. Uh, and we are going to apply all those maps to Maya. Okay, so I have Maya open now, and I opened my file with the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the, the model that, just, that I just exported from ZBrush. So let's go to File, Import. And of course it's going to be on top of the existing one. So I'm going to try to select it. Press W. I'm going to move it back a bit to see what's going on here. I'll right, hold down right click, I'm going to go to assign existing material, I'm just going to give it the Lambert one. I'm also going to normals and soften edge. I just want to see if there's a, a significant difference between the one from ZBrush and the one that I already had here. So I'm not noticing uh, big changes. Maybe a few areas like here. Suffer, softening, there's some softening on this side. And there's some space in between this one. Now you can fix that any time, of course. So, I'll have both of them here, but I think I'll probably use the one I took from ZBrush. Alright, so I'm going to edit UVs, and under my UV area here, I'm going to polygons, uh, UV snapshot. I'm going to click where it says browse, just so I can pick a place to save it. I'm going to set it to a 2048, keep aspect ratio, set it my IFF, and OK. We can close that, and now we can open Photoshop. Alright, I'm going to uh, Control O to open. 
I'm going to open that file that I just created. Alright, it looks really transparent. So now I'm, go I'm using my move tool here. So I'm going to select it and drag. I'm going to drag it to my other window where I opened my diffuse map. Hold down shift before you let before you you let go. Now let go, and it's going to be exactly on top of the other image, as you can see here. All right, this is just so that you know uh, what areas you're working with, and as you can see, I made a huge mistake here. Obviously, I had a UV area shell on top of the other, so that's something that I should have fixed before I did any. Uh, texturing but I can still kind of fix it if I paint over this area I can move this somewhere else but that's just for me to fix so the first thing I want to do is uh, let's work on the eyeballs and I'm pretty sure those are right here so you can paint the eyeballs if you want to by hand or you can find a picture of an eyeball or on Google or something like that so I found some pictures that I might use, so I'm just going to open those. And again, I'll, I'll have these on my website just in case you need them, but of course you can just look for uh, any picture you want to. Beware of copyright, of course. So I think I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use my marquee select on elliptical. Hold down shift to make sure it's a circle. Right, and I'm going to go to my move tool and take that out. And it looks like it's really big. So press Ctrl T to scale that. I'm going to hold down shift as I scale that down to preserve the aspect. Let's get in there. Control T again, Let's scale that down. Oops. Try that again. Okay. So I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to Maya just to make sure that I'm working on the correct object, the correct area. I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to uh, use this one instead. So type zero here, get it back to place. I'm going to assign new material for this just for now. This is going to be a temporary material. Or actually, I'm just going to use the existing one. To go here, click on the channel box until you get to Lambert 1. And under color, click on the checker box. At this time, I'm using a Photoshop file, so I'm going to click on PSD and click on the little folder and browse for the image. 